Hey guys, welcome to the video number 348. My name is Ajay and I'm today going to talk about something very special, something which uh, has been bothering a lot of my subscribers in the past and I have received a 4 emails uh, though I had actually uploaded the video also but this is something now I'm going to take you know further one step extra and in this I'm going to talk about the two methods that how to deal with the existing PowerPoint right if you're watching the channel for the first time then I want to tell you uh, first of all welcome to the channel and you have not at the right place because here we have 348 amazing videos on excel excel vba ms access and access vba now, this the video which we are going to talk about today is this is going to be on the point i want to just take maybe 15 seconds this is when you go to my channel you have a playlist and here you can see all these 42 amazing different different playlist categories right so what you need to do is if you're looking for the powerpoint you can search here a playlist which has a title called connecting PowerPoint with the excel right so just scroll it down and you will find it somewhere right so maybe you can use the search playlist and you can write here point and when you're going to search it when you press this search button it's going to take you to that so here if you click on this we have eight amazing videos part one part two part three part four part five everything is very nicely actually and so you can start watching these videos from the first level right so these are the videos which i have in the past i was as you know telling you that it's the charts on the existing powerpoint so if you have an existing powerpoint how to deal with that so this video is going to talk about that but in a different way we are going to discuss about the late binding and the early binding methods both the technologies are absolutely different and i'm going to tell you where and when you can use that so let me first of all tell you what exactly we want to do you can see on my desktop there is a point which has a name called fresh.pbdx so it has a name called fresh.pbdx pdx now we have here three slides and what i want to do is i want to work with this current powerpoint and i want to paste this chart specifically from the sheet two and i want to paste it actually on the fourth slide now in your case you may have 10 slides and you want to paste it on the 11th slide you don't want to destroy the previous slide so this code we are going to make it in a way that first it counts the all the slides of your powerpoint and then it will add the you know slide to the next your last slide and there it is going to paste that part what is the catch here the catch is because i had already talked about this in my previous video i'm going to tell you actually two methods right one is the method the early binding and the second method is actually going to be the late binding Okay, so let us go ahead and let us now uh, take this code. So the first method which I'm going to talk about is, is going to be the early binding. You go in the visual basic and first of all, you need to ensure that you click on the tool and the reference and here you should have your PowerPoint on. So I'm going to press M and I go to the Microsoft PowerPoint. So in the Microsoft PowerPoint, I'm going to select Microsoft PowerPoint. So I think it's it's somewhere up because they are all, all alphabetically sorted. So I have E. That's the one. That's the one, and you click here 16.0 because I'm using PowerPoint 16. Whatever version you have, according to that number, will come. But that's not going to change the concept. Program will work. So the first thing we're going to write here is existing PowerPoint. Let's say this is the name of my macro. Now what we want to do. I declare an object variable which is ppt you can declare whatever you want and you get to see here powerpoint application so say ppt equals to new powerpoint dot application this is how you write and we're going to make it visible right so, so that i can show you in the code you can write it through that's why now from this ppt actually going to use the presentation dot open command right so when you do that you need to basically provide here the path so what is your powerpoint path i go the desktop i right click on this properties i'm going to select the complete path from the security copy this come back to the code and within the codes i'm going to write this like this so now this will ensure that your property is going to be open okay and there we can work on that now what is the next thing i want to do well i would like to count how many presentation how many basically the slides i have but before that you need to activate your presentation because after the powerpoint application the next hierarchy comes the piece of the presentation right so we're going to define here let's say my presentation as s and powerpoint dot presentation 
Okay, and this is going to be defined as my active presentation. So I will write here active presentation. Now this becomes my active presentation. Just in case if you are going to open the new PowerPoint, you're going to create the new PowerPoint, you're not going to open it, then this ppt.active presentation, this line actually becomes like this. Set press equals to ppt presentations.add because there you need to add the presentation because of the new ppt. But here we have already got the PowerPoint, so we don't have to add anything. Everything is added. Up. Okay, so now I'm going to declare one variable and I declare it as long. And this i is going to tell me that how many basically the slides I have. So this is how you write slides.count. So basically your press object variable is your presentation and this is going to tell you how many slides you have. So in my case, it is going to have three. So I'm going to add one to it. But once you have added the, you know, this slide, the next time what you want to do is you want to come back to your Excel and you want to see that what is your at name. So here I have a name called at three. So I can define it, right? So how are you going to define it? I will write here dim ws as worksheet and then set my worksheet because it is an object. So that is why I'm going to use the set word and then you will define here the name of the sheet, which is sheet two. Okay. Now this ensures that ws is going to be always referred as no, sheet two. Now the term for the chart, so I'm going to define my chart. This is how you define the chart. When you're working on the existing charts, this is how you write it. And if you're working on the new charts, you define dim CHS chart only, right? So this is a different class. And just in case if you don't have any idea about the charts, you want to learn the charts, how to create the charts, please go ahead and watch the Excel VB uh, charts in the pivots playlist. There you will find I've talked about everything from the very beginning. Okay, so now what you want to do, I want to define my chart. So I say that my chart actually equals to my sheet, which is she to ws dot chart object and then you're going to define the chart so what is your chart name you know your chart name is actually chart 2 let me just check that again oh, sorry it's actually a 3 so you're going to write here chart 3 okay so this this is what i'm talking about right if you're not able to understand this is a name box the chart 3 the name of this so now we want to actually paste this so how are you going to paste it Right. So once you have the this, you know, the PowerPoint in open, uh, the PowerPoint, which let me just open in this. First of all, I'm going to open it manually. Once you have this chart, you know, opened the PowerPoint, you would like to uh, insert the new slide. OK, so I have already counted this I, which is going to be four. So this is how now what you can do is be here. You can, you know, create the slides. You can write here uh, dim, uh, let's say my slide as powerpoint dot slide okay what this slide actually equals to your your slide actually so you're gonna write my slide equals to what it, it is you know going to be so it is going to be equals to uh, my presentation and then slides write the slide and then or add and then start the bracket please ensure that it should be add not add slide right and then you're going to add the index what is the index index means which slide number you want to add so i've already got i which is four so i'm going to add it here and i'm going to name it as ppt lay pp layout plan you can choose whatever you want right so i'm just going to design this as a layout plan. so now your you know slide is going to be created that that's the first thing now what you Next thing which you want to do is you want to simply copy the chart. So I'm going to copy the chart. I'm going to paste it on my slide, which is my slide, and then shapes. This is how you use the shapes because uh, you know the chart is going to be pasted as a shape, and then you use the paste special, paste special, and then whatever format you want to choose, bitmap, default, whatever. I'm going to choose the bitmap. Let's say so. This is how it is going to be pasted. Now this is a code, a very small code, but this is going to clear your concept. Now in this, if I just run this, let me first uh, close this. Now we're gonna run it one by one, and because this code runs very fast, generally F8 doesn't work. Normally, uh, you know, when you press the F8, uh, the lines get executed. So I'm gonna put the break code here. Show you. Now let us run this. So there we go. The first thing is the you know this PowerPoint application is going to be created in the memory, and if I show you PPT dot visible equals to true, it's actually you know going to be visible. Now right now I don't see it. See that nothing happened so basically the i have a reason for that because i have already opened this ppt one of the slides which i use for my videos so let me just click on the save and close this now let me run the program again now you would see that the moment i run this you see in the background it is activated it's absolutely a layout 
it's not a proper PPT. You can see all the ribbons are actually unhighlighted, right? From here, we're going to open the current PPT, which is on my desktop. And when, when I run it, you see that it became, it hit open. This is, the, this is what I was talking about. This is going to give you the four because you have this. Your presentation dot slides dot count is going to give you the three. And that is why I'm adding one. So that means this I is going to be, you know, we're going to pass on this I the slide, my slide. And my slide is going to be considered as the fourth slide. So the moment you run this, a new slide is added, you can see here, right? So now I'm going to define the chart. The chart is also defined. The chart is going to be copied. And you will have it pasted. And you can see that that actually is pasted in this slide, right? Now, this is the early binding method, guys. Now, let me tell you what is the early binding method. Now, what happens if I send you this workbook and you're going to open it and supposedly you're using the lower version because I'm using the highest version right now is 2016. And I showed you, it says 16.0. So what will happen, this code will not work in the lower versions. You will have to tell your guys, you know, when they run, before they run the code, before they click on the button, you know, somewhere here where you will create the button, they have to first go to the tools and click on the reference. And there, they will find this extension, Microsoft PowerPoint 16.0 as missing. It will be a missing word, you know, coming there. So they have to uncheck that. And then they have to select their own library, which would be 15.0, 14.0, 12.0. 15.0 doesn't exist. I think that's an unlucky number. That's what I think they would have considered. But anyways, so point is, if you have the same version, then there's no need. It will catch automatically. The code will run. But if you have a lower version, you will have to tell your audience. That can be irritated for your audience. If they are not good in the Excel or if they are good, then I think that's just a maybe a matter of... 10 seconds that they got to activate with this library whatever it is and then they can run the code very easily so that is called the lead binding method now one more thing if i'm going to make this code in 2007 version and i'm going to send it to you and you're using the higher version then there's no problem the code will run because from the lower version to the higher version the code doesn't give the missing error right now so this is fine with the early binding method now what i'm going to tell you is there's another method which we use the late binding now late binding actually is a technology which we use when we really don't want our users to create the reference so that is going to work on all the versions whatever version you will have i will send it to you know i will send out that code to you and it, it is going to work right so what you can do is how to convert this early binding method to a late bind binding method uh, you can copy the code and i'm just going to insert the module one more and i'm going to paste it here right so i just name it as uh, the two so you have to you know replace this powerpoint application word with the object okay and here you will have to write that create object create object please create the object for me and then you're going to write here which object powerpoint so what will happen we will take the powerpoint application object your machine depending upon what version you have so there will be no problem okay. so this is how it's going to happen i have talked about this create object in also one of my previous videos where i talked about what is the difference between late binding and early binding but i'm somebody who really don't have the habit to repeat the videos this video is not about the create object because create object means that you will have to create a new powerpoint but in this case we are already going to work on the existing powerpoint so when you're going to use that you will have to first of all on this uh, open this ppt so i'm going to open this ppt this is must you're going to use the uh, lead binding method so here instead of the create object you will use the get object okay and in the get object first parameter which comes is the path name so you don't have to define the path name just keep it simple just write it the comma and then just use this in the comma this is how it is going to look like so in the quotes you have a comma and then because we don't provide any path here it is already going to be you know uh taken up because when you have op have already this powerpoint open in front of you this powerpoint dot application remains there so this is a method which you will write you don't have to open it because this is already open okay so you don't have to show this as a ppt dot visible as well now your presentation powerpoint presentation that again becomes the object so wherever you have defined the you know the powerpoint application any task that has to be changed to the object so in other words wherever you have written the dim statement that has to be object 
at the VBA design. You know, it's it's a more of a light variant at the variant data type which you use when you are not sure whether the data type has to be integer, single, double, or string. Similarly, I'm going to define this as an object. This is also I'm going to define it as an object. Everything will leave it to the VBA, and this is how your code is going to be generated. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this run this without this library. So you you can see I'm going to uncheck it. Okay. So now when I'm going to run this, let us see if we are able to do that or not. Right? So I'm going to run this. There we go. You got the first error variable not defined. So this PPT layout basically when you use the Eight binding method you can't use this you have to write here maybe one or two you can search on that i mean what formats they have the sequence so if i run this again again i will have an error paste p bitmap so here also i'm gonna run i'm gonna write here as p special one now when i'm going to run this you see that it is going to run now file name or class name not found during automation press process so we will have to see that what exactly is wrong with this code um okay so i just noticed that i think this shouldn't be there so this is something you are not going to do that right so this is how you will write actually okay so i'm just going to write here the comma and then the you know so path name will come as nothing it is going to nothing i use the comma to go to the class which you know if i just scroll here you see that class is bold so that is going to be the powerpoint dot application that's it this is how you write the code don't forget to write the comma and then the powerpoint application now if i run this it should work there we go so now the ppt is going to take this active presentation if i just show you let me just on this so that we can see what how it is going to work so i'm going to put the break code here and now we're going to run this now you see that the slide is also added so the moment i run this again chart is copy now and there we go so you can see that the chart is copied in this slide guys now if, if you if you think if you uh, you know wondering that how we have this kind of a you know basically uh, this basically uh, you know different different the rectangular boxes simply because of the reason that I have added here one now one must be designated to some layout okay for example if I just take you back to the module 8 here I use the PPT layout and you remember uh, if I just on the Microsoft point application again just give me a second Microsoft point right so there we have now here we have a lot of lot of different layouts uh, when I use this comma, you can see here a lot of you know these drop down. So it might be one of them. I really don't know. They they have the indexes and that index you have to you can Google it and you can find it out, right? Now one more thing I want to tell you guys. You see that I press the comma and all the things are coming here. So dot operator works very nice. All the parameters you can see when you use the early binding, and that is why people prefer this early binding because you know what happens when you when you write the uh, when, when you write here, if I just uncheck this and you just directly go and uh, hit this uh, lead binding method, what happens when you use the comma, nothing actually comes here. And that is something, you know, which is uh, kind of a little difficult to remember that what was the value there. For example, if I directly write PPT as object and set PPT equal to get object and everything, and then may, I, I may forget this PPT dot active presentation command because what happens when you write this PPT dot nothing comes. So dot doesn't work actually in the early uh, in the late binding method. So that is why very cleverly what we do, we first of all put the code in the early binding so that we can use the dot because you know this helps you a lot. If you write, um, if, if you just have this already again on, if I just click on the tools and I just go to the uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, and if I have this library on, this one, I just come back here and I write the PPT dot. You see that this dot actually tells me a lot of stuff, right? So it is easy for me to remember, to recall, all right, so what was it, right? But in the lead binding, that is something which is not going to come. So first we use this, we use the dot operator using the lead binding method, and then we simply just change that to the lead binding because it is very easy for us to convert the lead binding, early binding into a lead binding because you just need to in the dim statements in the object. And because we are going to deal with the existing object, so that is why I'm using the get op. And it is going to remain as same even if you're working with the uh, MS Word or you know any other thing. So this you can use as a get object. Right? Otherwise it would have been create object because then it would have created a new instance for the PowerPoint. So this is the difference and if I'm just gonna you know click on if I'm just gonna write here zero maybe let let us see if zero is the index for any sort of you know this um, 
the power point if i just open this again and i'm going to run this now with this uh, you know the zero index if i just run this look at this what will happen so yeah it's an invalid number so you can find that you know what exactly the number is all about you know how the indexes are there for the different different layouts so if i just write two let me see all right so two actually works for me so i'm gonna run this code and this time let us see what actually it generated so if i click here you see that this actually looks a little bit different now so this is how I many you can search on this which number suits you and then and you know the code right that is something you can find it in the google also that what exactly in the early binding method in the late binding method uh now, how to actually find the index of the slides okay and uh, you get to know so this is how you can convert the only binding into the lead binding and now if i send this code to you you see that i don't have a reference here okay i don't have the powerpoint reference here activated but still the code worked for me right so that means it is irrespective of the motion so if i send it to you doesn't matter the version you are using you will be able to use it right so this is how guys it's a use of the git object and this video also tells you that how to convert the early binding into the lead binding. Early binding generally are fast in terms of execution because there the VB already know what it has to do. Uh, in the late binding, actually the code takes time. Yes, you have you are creating the object it is not sure, so it, it's gonna be a little slow. But the point is uh, for the macros which are really uh, 100 or 150 lines, I don't think so. The speed is going to be a concern at all, right? Anyways, you should have all the all the options on. Me speaking, I, I actually use the uh, early binding method because I love to work with the dot operators so that I can see the methods and the properties associated with the classes. But again, it depends if my audience is using the different versions, I'm not really gonna stick to the early binding. I'm gonna send them the code by making it a late binding, right? So that's it for now, guys. And thank you so much. Keep posting your comments. I will be back very soon. Thank you so much for watching.